so we started with this. Then we started picking out trial cadences that sound like this. Then today we've been working on a long version that sounds like this. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing in motion part 63 colors. In today's episode, we have continued to work with our sincere improvisations where we're adding these uh, triplet arpeggios to a backbone. And we've been experimenting with rules of thumb and we're finding that it's better to pick the backbone and then match the arpeggio variations because if you remember there are a heck of a lot of uh, a heck of a lot of uh, arpeggio variations and in, in fact there are six for every arpeggio there they are ramp up ramp down arc down trough down trough up arc up so what happened is in working with this improvisation, which was just a very few, a very few selected cadences, like only six, uh, we went at it and worked out the rules of thumb. So we're going to play this for you first. This is the short improvisation. Here we go. So in doing that, we also kind of worked out an overall structure. We're ending on a very kind of a traditional half statens resolution. And we have some traditional uh, urgy stuff in there, floaty stuff, and even a little bit of clashy stuff. So, so we went ahead and did that kind of full tilt boogie here with all 56, all, all, Count them all 56 of these chords, and then we kind of made what we called 14 trial sections, each of them with nine bars. And then we went through and put backbones and arpeggios. So now we're going to play this for you, and this should bring us home. So what we like so far about our process is that we said we're working out rules of thumb and we're finding that we, it's kind of chicken and the egg. You, you, you play the arpeggios, we put all the arpeggios in ramp up and then we listen to them against the cadence. And then we started to hear kind of suggested backbones coming out. So then we started putting backbones in. Then when we put a backbone in, then we have to adjust the arpeggio so that the first note of the 
backbone is equal to the, I mean, the first note of the arpeggio is equal to the first note of the backbone. And then when we do that, then we listen, we say, oh, we don't quite like that. So there's this iterative process going on. We did break it into three arcs or parts here, and it's 96 seconds. So it's about 30 seconds per part at the moment. And then we went back and we've been reworking these backbones to something a little more interesting and in variation. And, and that's as far as we got. So our ideas for next time are to keep working with what we're now calling improvisation five, interval pairs long, keep listening to the backbones for interest and variation, and ditto the arpeggios. Now, we've been using the simplest possible arpeggio selection to match it, uh, which usually means there's, there's others available. Um, and then also, one of the things we had done with uh, this one that you heard first that's that's more or less complete is that we made a uh, an effects recording of it with the um, here which sounds kind of metallic because of the reverb effect. And the issue, of course, is that we're only getting about 20 seconds out of that composition. And so that's why we're working on the one that we call long, because we're up to 96 seconds, at least at this tempo. So our ideas, as we already said, are to keep working. So acknowledgments to Miss Cleo came by and kept us inspired. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming.